I said, who are you? What are you doing here? My name is Gabriel. I am butler to the Holloways. Gabriel? But you... You can't be. Well, you're... You're dead. Midnight. The witching hour when the night is darkest. Our fears the strongest and our strength at its lowest ebb. Midnight, when the graves gape open and death strikes. How? You'll learn the answer in just a minute in The House That Time Forgot. Midnight, Tales of Mystery and Terror by Radio's Masters of the Macabre. Our story by Sigmund Miller is The House That Time Forgot. Early evening on a desolate part of the Virginia coast, along a road near the beach comes a car with two people in it. I guess we've done enough looking for today, Eva. Oh, it's really beautiful country around here, dear. Wild and lovely. Mm-hmm. Darling, if we can't find a house, perhaps we should buy some land and build. Well, we'd better start back to town. It's getting dark, and I, I think we're in for a storm. Oh, look, Fred. Hmm? Look at that house we're coming to. Right. Oh, now, isn't it a beauty? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Nobody that owns that one would want to sell it. Drive slowly, dear. I'd like to take a good look at it. All right. There's a for sale sign. Yeah? This house for sale. See Mr. Cecil Smith, Westfield, Virginia. Oh, that's interesting. Well, let's drive in there, into the grounds. I'd oh, like we to... can come back tomorrow, Eva. It's really starting to blow up. But it'll only take a minute. I've, I've just got to have a close look. All right, but we're going to get caught in the rain. I'll back in to save time. We'll watch the fenders on that side. All right, dear, I'll watch. Come ahead. Am I clear? Okay, you're all right. Fine, fine. Ah, there's a light in one of the gable windows. Well, I guess somebody's home. That's beautiful, Fred. Simply magnificent. Yeah, the grounds look a little neglected, though. Grounds? Who cares about that? Go ahead and knock. Okay. I wish they'd hurry. We're going to get caught in a storm. Oh, don't worry about it. They don't seem to answer, do they? Try knocking again. Mm. That's odd. Must be somebody home. We saw a light in the window. Mm, maybe they can't hear us. Let's try calling them. Oh. Hello there. Hello. <laughs> That's very strange. Yeah. I... Hey. What? I hear something. Listen. It's a clock striking. Now let's let's try the door. Oh, it's not locked. Uh, what do you think? Uh, well, uh, let's go in. It's a big place, but lovely. Wait a minute, dear. Anybody home? Well, if there is, they can't hear us or don't want to. Uh, come on, dear. We'll, we'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> place needs fixing up, but it's worth the fixing. Shall we take it? Well, I... I don't know. We'll talk to the agent in Westfield, and then... Well, we'll see. <laughs> Interested in buying the Holloway house? Yes, Mr. Smith. It's just the kind of house we've been looking for. <clears throat> it's a fine place, all right. Even got a private inlet to moor a large-sized boat. It's got everything except... Uh... Except what, sir? Well, it's only fair that I tell you all its uh, defects. <laughs> what defects, Mr. Smith? Well, you see, Mrs. Jordan, it's kind of hard to put your finger on it. There's something very queer about the house. Huh? Oh. <laughs> you mean it's haunted? Well, I don't know exactly, Mr. Jordan. No one has seen a ghost there yet. <laughs> well, we we don't mind ghosts, do we, Fred? <laughs> no, no, we don't believe in them, Mr. Well, Smith. <laughs> I, I didn't say it was haunted, but 
Well, people say that the house is alive, that, that it has a life and a will of its own. A life? Well, I don't know what you mean. Well, I've had four caretakers in the Holloway house since I took possession of it, and none of them stayed more than a few days. Well, why did they quit? Well, I don't know. They didn't see any ghosts or apparitions, but they all felt the same way, that, that the house was alive. Every one of them. Oh, well, there must have been something that scared them away. Well, I'd better tell you the whole story. Yes, we'd like to hear Please it. Please do. Now, the house originally belonged to Richard Holloway. Mm -hmm. Seven years ago, in 1939, Richard and his wife, Diana, went on a short cruise in their yacht, the, the Viking Second. Oh, that's an interesting name, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. They never came back. Oh? They had two friends visiting them who refused to go with them. The strangest part about it is that these friends warned them that they'd never return alive from the cruise. And Holloway's left at them. Oh, well, well, how did they know, th these friends, that the Holloways wouldn't come back? I don't know. Nobody knows. Well, uh, did you talk to these friends? No, I never saw them. Uh, I only know about it through John Gabriel. He was the Holloway's butler. Oh, been dead for two years now. As a matter of fact, even Gabriel didn't know these friends. He'd never seen them before. Uh, it's a mystery that I've thought about for years. Uh, I'm afraid it's going to be a mystery forever. Hmm, very interesting, but uh, we'd still like to buy the house. Uh, Mr. Smith, uh, there was a light shining in one of the windows when we were there yesterday. We also heard a clock chiming. Mm, that's funny. No one's been inside that house in over a year. Oh, huh? uh... Eva, perhaps we ought to think this over. Oh, huh? nonsense, darling. You're not going to let some old wives' tail bother you, are you? No, no. But how could a clock still be going if no one's been in that house for a year? Well, there's a life buoy not far from the house. You might have mistaken it for the clock. Now, you see, everything has a logical explanation. Yeah, what about the light in the window? Well, it was probably a reflection from the sun or something. We'd like to take the house, Mr. Smith. Well, if you wanted, I'd be glad to sell it to you. I just thought it fair to tell you all about it, so if anything happens, you can't blame me. Well, here we are, darling. Our house. Mm, I hope we'll like it. Oh, of course we will. Let's go in. Mm -hmm. Do you have the key, dear? Yes, but we don't need it. The door was open, remember? Oh, yes, yes, that's right. Hey. Huh. It's locked again. Oh, Mr. Smith must have locked it. Well, look. Hmm? Darling, everything clean, dusted. Why, it's spotless. Oh, now, Mr. Smith really is a dear. Hey, it looks lived in, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, I, I told you we'd like it. Uh, I, I suppose. It, hmm, he also put flowers around. Yes, it does smell of flowers, roses. But let's look around. <laughs> Bright-looking kitchen, isn't it, Fred? Yeah. And this wonderful big refrigerator. And it's full of food. No. Fresh food. Yeah. Oh, that Mr. Smith, why, he thought of everything. Oh, the bedroom is even bigger than I thought. Look at the beds. What? Someone has slept in them. That man Mr. Smith sent to clean the house must have slept in it. Yes, and he apparently slept in both beds. This library. Darling, look at that paneling. Yeah, yeah. It's a very lovely room. Everything is charming. But... But what? Look at the fireplace. Well, what's wrong with the fireplace? Is there is just some half-burnt logs in it? Yes, yeah, just some half-burnt logs still smoldering. Well, it was the cleaning man. I don't think there was a cleaning man. Now, don't be absurd, Fred. The clock we heard the first time we were here. Eva, I just can't shake off the feeling that someone is still living here. You're being ridiculous. Well, maybe I am, but I, I feel like an intruder. Oh, darling, it's, it's that story Mr. Smith told us about the Holloways and their mysterious friends. It, it, it's got you all keyed up. Yeah, well, I'm going to call Mr. Smith and find out about that cleaning man you think he sent here. Uh, operator. Oh, operator, give me Westfield 403. You're really being a fuss part, Fred. Yeah, we'll see. I'll try... Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Smith? Yes? Uh, this is Fred Jordan. Oh, hello, Mr. Jordan. How's everything up at Holloway? Oh, everything seems fine. Uh, thanks for having the house cleaned up. Cleaned up? I don't understand you. 
Didn't you send a cleaning man to straighten up the house? Uh, no, Mr. Jordan. The house was sold as is. I never sent anyone over. Uh, might interest you to know we found the house in a spotless condition. Cleaned and ready for occupancy. Oh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Smith. I'll be in touch with you later. <laughs> Came out. Yeah, we'd better go back to the house. Oh, now, please don't be upset. There, there must be some logical explanation. Mm. Maybe, maybe somebody took advantage of a boarded-up house and was living in it rent-free. I'd like to correct you, dear. Someone is still living in it besides ourselves. Sometimes, Fred, you get very ridiculous. Mm, maybe. Well, let's go back inside. Look. What? There's a fire burning in the fireplace. Well, now, what's wrong with that? I haven't touched this fireplace since we got here. You didn't. Well, look. The table is set for tea. Did you do this? No, I... I, I didn't. Oof, the teapot is hot. Somebody... Somebody must be here, hiding. If they are, I'll... I'll find them. Come on. <laughs> understand it. I, I just... Cellar to attic and there's no one here. But it's incredible. Someone is living here and we can't see them. It, it, it doesn't make sense. There's somebody here right now. Right in this room. It sounds crazy, but I know it. Fred. What? The clock. What about it? It, it just struck midnight and it's it's only 10 o'clock. A house that is deserted, except for invisible tenants, and a clock that is running backwards. Has it just struck 12 for... Murder at midnight. <laughs> And now, back to Murder at Midnight and The House That Time Forgot. Fred? Hmm? Fred, wake up. Huh? Get up. Huh? What? What is it, dear? What's, what's the matter? Look out there, out the window. Why? Get up and take a look. Oh. At what? Boat out there in the inlet? It must have put in while we were sleepy. Can't you read the name, dear? Huh? It's the Viking Second. The Viking Second? Yes. Wasn't that the Holloway's yacht? The one that never came back? That's what Mr. Smith said. Uh, either Mr. Smith is a fantastic liar or something very fantastic is happening to us. Perhaps the Holloway's have finally come back. After seven years? It, it doesn't make sense. None of it. Yeah, that's putting it mildly. Darling, we... We ought to take a close look at the boat. You don't sound very enthusiastic about it, but... Yes, I suppose we ought to. Whoever is on it might be able to tell us something. Well, the gangplank is down. Mm. Somebody must have come off the boat. Well, they couldn't have, dear. At least they didn't come up to the house. Well, let's, let's go up and see. Hmm? All right. Dick? Uh, anyone here? No answer. Maybe they're down below. They must be. I'd rather not go down there. Oh, we've got to find out. Let's, uh, let's both go down together. All right, you keep right behind me. Oh, don't worry, dear, I will. <laughs> Here's the stateroom. Oh, there's, there's nobody here either. Anybody here? No one. At least... Yeah, but the beds are still warm. Somebody just left the stateroom a little while ago. Yes, it, it seems so. Let's get out of here, Eva. I've got a peculiar feeling down my spine. It, it, it is chilly. Well, we'd better go back to the house. The 
lights are on in the living room. Did you put them on? Just one of the lamps, a floor lamp. Well, all the ceiling lights are lit. Yes, I can see that here. Let's go in. Yes. Well, the door is locked. We didn't even close it when we went out. No. I remember we left it open. Good evening. Who are you? I beg your pardon. Well, I said, who are you? I'm John Gabriel, butler to the Holloways. Gabriel? What? That's right, ma'am. Whom do you wish to see? Well, we don't want to see anyone. We, we live here. I'm afraid you're mistaken, sir. The Holloways live here, have been living here for years. But this is our house. We bought it. And, and, and the Holloways are dead. Dead? Yes. I'm afraid someone has misinformed you. Well, this, is, this is like a nightmare. Look here, Gabriel, or whoever you really are. We bought this house from Cecil Smith, a real estate agent in Westfield. He's not the kind of a man who plays practical jokes. No, he's not. He's a very sober man indeed. He told us you were dead, too. As you can see, madam, I'm very much alive. Oh, the... This is crazy. We'd better talk to the people who call themselves the Holloways. Perhaps you should. They'll be in any minute. Please come in, won't you? Will you excuse me if I close the windows? We're going to have a storm. Perfectly all right. Would you care for some tea? Look here, Gabriel. We've been waiting an hour for Mr. Holloway and his wife. They haven't shown up, and I don't think they will. Now, just what is your game? Would you care for some tea, Mrs. Jordan? No, thank you. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir, I did. As soon as Mr. and Mrs. Holloway arrive, I'm sure you'll be convinced of your error. They should be here any minute since they plan to leave tonight on a cruise. Oh, this is mad. Fantastic. Uh, ah, they've come. Just missed the storm, Gabriel. Oh, hello. I don't believe I know you. This is Mr. and Mrs. Jordan, Mr. and Mrs. Holloway. Oh, I'm glad to meet you, Mrs. Jordan. Mr. Jordan. Well, thank you. you. Are you Richard Holloway? Yes. I can't believe it. I... It's all terribly confusing, Mr. Holloway. These people claim that this is their house. What? That they bought it from Cecil Smith. They also claim that you, Mrs. Holloway, and myself are dead. Somebody's playing some kind of a joke on them. Well, I'd say it was a very unpleasant joke, Dick. We've been living here for years and years, Mr. and Mrs. Jordan. Oh, uh, before I forget, Gabriel, uh, get our suitcases aboard the yacht, will you? We'll be leaving in a few minutes. Yes, sir, right away. Fred, do you suppose that maybe we're dreaming this? Well, if we are, we're dreaming it together. I'm sorry, I don't know how this happened to you. Uh, perhaps you'd better stay here for the night. There's plenty of room. And we'd be delighted to have you. Uh, would you mind if I called Mr. Smith? Oh, please do. The phone's right there on the table. I know, thanks. Operator, operator, let me have Westfield 403. Never. Hello, uh, Mr. Smith? That's right. Uh, this is Mr. Jordan. Who? Uh, Fred Jordan. Remember, you sold me the Holloway house? The Holloway house? Yes. You must be mistaken. I never sold it. That property's not for sale. What are you talking about? Who is this? Listen, Mr. Smith, you know very well who I am. You won't get away with this. I'll have you brought into court now. I never heard of you in my life. You must be crazy. Goodbye. Hello. Hello. He, he hung up. What did he say? Well, he said he never sold the house and he'd never even heard of me. You must have been taken in by someone who posed as Mr. Smith. That's really a shame. You have to be very careful these days. We'd be glad to have you stay here till you find other quarters. Well, I... As a matter of fact, you can stay for a few days until we get back. We're taking a trip on our boat. Perhaps you'll be able to get it all straightened out in the morning. I, I, I just don't understand it. The Mr. Smith we had dealings with wasn't a crook. I know he wasn't. Well, that was my feeling, too, but I... Oh, you're, you're not going out to sea in this kind of weather. Oh, we don't mind a little rain. My husband's a very good sailor, Mrs. Jordan. He can handle the Viking second in any kind of weather. Well, it sounds like a gale coming up. No, we like them. Exciting. Well, it's dangerous to set out in this weather. They're very dangerous. Oh, now, don't worry about us. We don't drown easily. Oh, darling, we'd better get started. Oh, yes, yes. I, I'm all set. Uh, are the suitcases aboard? Yes, uh, Gabriel took them. Uh, uh, something's wrong with your grandfather clock. It, it only struck eight times. Uh, yes, it's correct. Uh, my watch says eight o'clock, too. Well, how can that be? It's, it's after midnight. <laughs> you really are mixed up, Mr. Jordan. It's only eight o'clock. Well, my watch says 1.30. Uh, well, so does mine. Well, I'm afraid ours is right, Mrs. Jordan. It's very old, but very accurate. Of course, there's a legend about it. The story is that it will sometimes go backwards in time. Has... Has that ever happened? <laughs> no. No, it's only a story. It's never gone anything but forward, like any other clock. But it's a nice story, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, delightful. <laughs> Might even be true. Mrs. Holloway. Yes? Uh, 
What is today's date? What? I believe it's September 10th. What, what year? 1939, of course. 1939? Yes, yes, of course, Fred. Uh, Mrs. Holloway, I'd, I'd like to ask you and Mr. Holloway something. Yes? Please, please, don't go out on this trip you're planning. Why not? Because if you do, I, I don't think you'll ever come back. What? What a terrible thing to say. Please, Mrs. Holloway, please. I don't know what's wrong with you two. You came in here with a strange story about owning my house, and now you tell us we're never going to come back. She's right. You won't come back. You'll pardon me for saying so, Mr. Jordan, but I think you're both crazy. I don't care what you think, but please don't go. Why, Mrs. Jordan? I, I have a hunch about it. We don't believe in hunches. Well, it's more than a hunch, Mr. Holloway. I know you're not coming if back. If you'll excuse us, I think we'd better get started. Come along, darling. I'm ready. I've put everything on board. Is there anything else, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, just take care of our guests. See that they're comfortable. Goodbye, Gabriel. Goodbye, and pleasant voyage. Make yourself at home, and we'll be back, despite your hunches. Oh, you must go, please. Oh, they've... they've gone. If you wish, you can occupy the master bedroom. I'll go up and make it ready for you. Was there anything else you wished, Mr. Jordan, ma'am? Uh, no, Gabriel, just go to bed. We'll, we'll sit here for a while. It's rather late, sir, nearly midnight. By your clock, Gabriel, but it, it seems to have stopped. So it has. It needs rewinding. It's going now. Yes, Seems to be ticking rather fast. Something's wrong. It never did that before. Fred. Hmm. Something's happening. The lights. Switch them on, Fred. As soon as I find the switch. Yes, what, what happened? I, I don't know. Maybe the storm. Lightning. Where's Gabriel? Oh. Gabriel? Gabriel? Never mind, dear. Can't, can't you find the switch? Uh, here it is. Oh. Fred! Fred! All, all that dust. Like the first time we saw the house. Darling, it's just... It's as if no one had been here for years. Where's Gabriel? There... There is no Gabriel. We're back in 19... 19- 46. And that means he's dead. You mean the clock did go backwards? Something else. You understand, too, now, don't you? We were the friends that Mr. Smith told us about. The mysterious friends that urged the Holloways not to go on that trip. Yes. Fred. What? The clock has stopped. Well, it needs rewinding. No, 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 don't touch it. We... We won't wind that clock again, ever. A house without tenants, except for the dead, and a clock that runs backward in time. If it was your clock, would you wind it? Or are you afraid it would keep you up nights while you waited for it to strike 12 for... Murder at midnight. Remember to be with us again when death comes out of the past, out of time gone by, and the clocks strike twelve for... Murder! At midnight! The Jordans, husband and wife, were played by Vinton Hayworth and Elsie Hitz. With music by Bert Berman, Murder at Midnight was directed by Anton M. Leader. Thank you.